I'm joined now by infectious diseases expert, Dr. Lisa Barrett. So what do you make of the jump in COVID cases in the most recent update? What do you think of that? Yeah, totally expected. We did see this last year, end of August, beginning of September, when people were heading back to class and getting together more, we think inside. Uh, and so that happened last year, gonna happen this year, is already happening, maybe a little earlier this year than we had expected. And if things follow last year, we'll have this bump in September and again in November, December. So totally expected, uh, very annoying for those who are getting on well, and certainly still uh, an important health challenge for people who are older or who have a poor immune system. There's that much COVID out there. Well, how contagious is this latest variant of the virus? I, I kind of sound like a broken record on this, but it seems like every time I say it's very contagious, it is very contagious. And that's what viruses do. As we build an immune response, that pushes the virus to evolve into something that transmits more easily. And certainly the in the lab assessments of these viruses do seem to be that they are very, very infectious. Does it matter exactly what the difference is from the last version? No. Chances are if you're in an inside space with somebody who has COVID for, you know, an hour, you're, you're, you've got a really good chance of at least getting infected. If you're vaccinated, hopefully not as sick, uh, but it is very, very contagious. Well, what are the reports of the symptoms? Are they similar to previous strains of COVID? Seem to be, uh, not a big difference, and certainly not one symptom that would make you say, aha, I have the new strain of COVID. Um, importantly, again, some, um, you know, runny nose, sore throat, sore eyes, muscle aches and pains, fever, um, a cough, uh, and sometimes uh, more of a pneumonia for people who may be uh, more at risk. Uh, some people have also still mentioned uh, some diarrhea type symptoms. So that is something that can turn up, even though we call it a respiratory virus. And of course, in the older person, uh, there may also be fatigue, lethargy, uh, meaning no energy. And in, in some who are quite a bit older, uh, confusion can happen as well. So nothing that's going to point you in one direction or the other necessarily from flu uh, versus COVID versus this other virus, respiratory syncytial virus. Um, but certainly if by proportions right now, it's mostly COVID that's circulating. So if you're sick, uh, there's a good chance you either have a, another corona or common cold virus or COVID. Well, should folks think about getting vaccinated now or, or should they wait a little further into the fall? That's, a, that's an interesting point. The spring campaign of vaccines that continued into um, August has now stopped. There is a pause at the moment. Health Canada had asked uh, the provinces to pause and destroy the old XBB vaccines for COVID that they had on hand. And we ha do not yet have an approved, updated COVID vaccine yet. And so that means at the moment, in most provinces, not all, but most provinces, um, if you go looking for a COVID vaccine, uh, you won't find one at the moment. Um, but when they do become available, as you might expect, um, it does look like they are going to provide updated and quite good uh, protection against the circulating viruses around at the moment. So definitely do consider getting vaccinated when they become available. But right now, um, in most provinces, there isn't a COVID vaccine that would be available to you at the moment. Well, with school uh, back in, I wanted to ask you about whooping cough um, now being on the rise. What do people, especially parents, need to know about that? Yeah, uh, so again, uh, whooping cough, you can get it. You can be infectious just before your symptoms. You get symptoms, and eventually, over the course of a couple of weeks, you get this uh, cough that has a, a whooping sound to it. And the cough can be very, very severe. Um, the people who get sickest 
again, are those who are oldest, in poorest health, have underlying lung problems, or those who are very, very young, so babies close to birth, or um, babies without a great immune system, or young people, like below the age of two. Um, so um, if you do have a child or uh, a parent, friend, family member who has those symptoms, do get checked out with your family uh, doctor or primary care provider. It is a vaccine preventable infection. And so it is included in general childhood vaccine. So if your child's on a regular vaccine schedule, they will get it. Um, if you're, you've got a, a, an older parent, uh, make sure that they're up to date or a family member who's older, make sure they're up to date with their uh, vaccines uh, because that is the key part of uh, not getting uh, pertussis or whooping cough. That's the other name. All right, well, Dr. Barrett, thank you as always. We do appreciate it. Yes, and uh, hopefully folks out there will keep getting tested and find some COVID tests uh, in their communities for those especially who are at high risk. We do have therapies that they can access and they can still self-report if they can't get to a lab test. So make sure you've got some of those uh, COVID tests on hand for the fall. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank you.